good afternoon. <clears throat> uh, in my last video, uh, I did a, a little bowl platter thing here. And uh, I used the Axe uh, abrasive paste and I it. it's the first time I've ever used that stuff. I was really impressed with it. But I, uh, one of the big topics in, all, in the comment section uh, of my video was what type of wood it is. I was kind of, uh, you know, like I said in the video, I wasn't absolutely sure what kind of wood this was. The man who gave it to me told me it was Spanish cedar. Uh, but when I turned it, I'm like, this doesn't look or smell or anything like cedar. looks more like mahogany or sapele. And, uh, but anyway, uh, there was a comment in there. Uh, one viewer left a comment, and all he left was a link to an article. And you can look down through the comments on this and, and find a link to that article. But it's about Spanish cedar. And apparently, uh, Spanish cedar, first of all, it's not from Spain, and it's not even cedar. Okay, so Spanish cedar, it's not cedar, and it don't come from Spain. I don't know how they got the name for it. But it's used in boat building uh, a lot and used to make like cigar boxes and things like that. So, uh, you know, it is it is a definite type of wood. But it's a mahogany. So what I'm thinking is that maybe this is Spanish cedar. Okay, uh, because it is, it is a mahogany. It grows in South America and it grows in Africa. Uh, Sapele is a mahogany. It grows in Africa. Uh, mahogany is a mahogany. It grows in South America. Um, you know, but anyway, I just I wanted to kind of touch on that a little bit, just simply because there were so many people commenting on what type of wood that is. Um, I'm pretty sure now that it is Spanish cedar. The guy, uh, the guy told me it was. It was actually written on the board. So I'm pretty sure that 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 uh, that that project was made from Spanish cedar, even though the wood's not from Spain and it's not cedar. So uh, it's a mahogany. But anyway. Getting to the topic of, of this video here is this bowl right here. Now, what happened with this bowl, I turned it back in 2010, and um, it was sold. Uh, it sold at an arts and crafts show. And, uh, well, the lady uh, contacted me who bought it. She had given it to her son's girlfriend or wife or something or uh, but anyway you know people people aren't really taught that you don't put wood in a dishwasher they find out after they put wood in a dishwasher well this bowl has been through a dishwasher uh, there's no finish left on it at all whatsoever uh, it's rough and uh, it even warped you can tell here it warped but it's made out of oak, pin oak, and uh, she brought it back to me asking if I might could fix it. I'm like, yeah, sure, I can fix it for you, no problem. Uh, so anyway, we're gonna we're gonna go back, we're gonna remount this thing, get it all trued back up, shaped, uh, you know, and I'm gonna try to keep the same shape. I don't really want to change the shape. Too much I may have to change some of it but we'll see but this video is going to be about restoring a bowl that has been through a dishwasher turned in 2010 this bowl's 10 years old Wow just doesn't seem like doesn't seem like I've been turning that long but anyway let's get this thing going We got the lawnmower chuck all mounted up. So let's uh and by the way this is this is the same lawnmower chuck that I built in my video. 
If you want to check it out, I'll leave a description in the in the uh, I'll leave a link in the description. Excuse me. But uh, man, it really works good. Uh, I've used it a lot. Sixteenth and now, and there's about a sixteenth on this side too. So should be pretty good to go. It's not. It's not going to be perfectly true, but it should run all right. Let me stand off to the side and see uh, see how she turns. Yeah, it's a little out, but it should be all right. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get this bottom trued up. And I'm going to turn the tenon to just glue on there. Alright. Rich ball gals. All I'm really looking for is a cut that goes all the way around. When I get that cut all the way around, that means it's true. So I've got a little bitty place still left to go. true but I'm, I'm just going to scrape across it with a uh, with the skew and get this thing ready for a tenon I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna mount this tenon on here just like that. And I'm using just a, a, a five minute epoxy from, that I got from Home Depot. And it's, this is the JB well, but of course you could use any, any epoxy you want to. We're just gonna spread the epoxy on the tenon itself. Spread it just like peanut butter or whatever. Just gonna spread it out. I like using epoxy rather than glue and uh, things like that. Well, actually, wood glue works really well, but uh, I like using it because it's so strong. This stuff is really, really strong. Just get it all, all in here and make this up. I, I really, I fell out with using CA on tenons. I, I don't know if it gets brittle or whatever when it dries, but I've just not had really good luck with using CA. But I've had really good luck using, using epoxy. We're just going to bring this up, hold that in place, and we're going to bring up the tail stock. All 
right, there we go. We'll give it a little twist, a little pressure, and we'll be back. I'm going to give it till tomorrow to cure up, and we'll be back then. All right, uh, it's been about four hours. I'm going to go ahead and try this, but uh. I also filled a couple of bug holes here, and I might have to go back and put some more in there. I just used the uh, coffee grinds. Coffee grinds that, uh, actually they're used coffee grinds. I just dry them up, put them in a jar, and, uh, and fill holes with it with CA and stuff like that. So anyway, it makes a really good filler. But I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this tenon. to scrape this thing back down or, or turn it until it was back round again and then uh, you know and do it just like a regular bowl but I ran into a problem here let me, let me just turn it on real slow and let you see it's way way out of round and it's actually so far out of round that if I turn this true, and then by the time I get to the inside to turn it true, it, it's going to be breaking out. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to sand it. I'm just going to sand it, and uh, I'm not going to worry about truing it back up. So I'm going to sand it. I'm going to try to re redo this burn mark and re-sand it and finish it. That, that's what I, that's what I'm gonna try to do. these places around here that have the CA and the coffee down I may have to put some more in there
Yeah, well, I'm just getting ready to put on my sand and sealer, and uh, and I'll I'll put on coats of sand and sealer until it just doesn't take any more. Uh, once it stops all soaking in, then then I'll be done with it. So let's uh, get the lathe going. Relatively slow. Sand and sealer is cured up. I'm just going to go ahead and sand this at 320 again. I'm going to sand between. Each coat with 320. Now I'm just going to start uh, applying this uh, sand, uh, abrasive sanding paste from Axe and uh, see if I can't liven this jewel back up. I'm going to apply this in here by hand. Now these uh, sanding pastes, I've seen people just like gob it on there. You really don't have to do that. I mean, just a thin coat of it will work just as well as putting a lot on there. Because you're going to be taking it back off anyway, you know. I just, I, I, you know, this the stuff is not cheap to buy, no matter what brand you get, it's not cheap to buy, and you don't want to just waste it, or at least I don't want to just waste it, you know, it's, it's really wasteful. So anyway. All right, we've got it applied on there. Let's just go ahead and start uh, rubbing this out here. Got one bad spot right there. Keep the lathe pretty slow. I'm just gonna start sanding with it. Making sure I get in that bead right there. All right, let's, I'm gonna start trying to take it off.
looking a lot better. Yep, a lot better. I'm going to do one more coat, and then I'll be right back. When you use these abrasive pastes, make sure that that you get the abrasive back off of your bowl or, or your project. Make sure you get it off your project. Like, uh, you can see here, as I, as I was rubbing, trying to take it off, I still got some left on here. But by the last time I did it, I have none. So it's all gone now. If it's not gone, then you've still got abrasives on your project. So now I'm just gonna go to the polish. It's, uh, it's made by Axe also, it comes with a kit. It's uh, Axe Polish and Restoring Paste. And it just looks like that. And it doesn't take much. I just wipe across the top and I've got I've got plenty on there to get started. going to kind of buff it out. I'm not pressing hard. Just going to buff it out. Make sure I get in that bead. Really good. I'll just give it a quick spin for you so you can kind of see looks really 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 nice even that oak is popping <laughs> it's awesome all right let's get the longworth chuck out
Well, all right then. Uh, just finished restoring this bowl. It's made out of oak. I first turned it about 10 years ago in uh, 2010. But <clears throat> you can't always, if you're going to go back and fix something that a customer has bought from you and they bring it back uh, because it went through a dishwasher, you can't always get it trued back up and stuff. Dishwashers put a lot of hot water in these things. The bowl was probably actually soaked all the way through. And then it uses really hot air to dry it back out. And uh, these things, it, it warped. And you may not be able to actually true it back up. Uh, if I'd have tried to true this back up, I might could have done it, but it would have been so thin the bowl would uh, you know, I don't know if I don't know if it would be the bowl that she wanted back. So I decided to keep it. It looks, it still looks almost like it did originally. It's just got some warping done, but we did flatten, uh, uh, we did true up the bottom and all, so it sits nice and flat and all that. <clears throat> but I also I filled a couple of bug holes which had been filled previously. But uh, I guess it all washed out in the dishwasher, maybe. But uh, and I filled that with coffee grinds and CA. And uh, I keep, I just keep this jar handy. It's, it's got uh, you know about that much coffee grinds in it. But and I just use old coffee grinds. I use coffee grinds that's already been through the coffee maker. Uh, you can use new coffee grinds or whatever, but. I figure I'm going to be throwing those out anyway, and I just I spread them out on a on a table on like some wax paper, and let them dry. Once they dry, real good. I put them in a jar, and they make really good filler to uh, for making repairs. Uh, I just I cram it all in there as tight as I can get it, and I use just thin CA, and make sure I soak all of it real good through there, and it fills the holes up. I'll come back after that's dried up and and put thin uh, medium CA over it uh, to get rid of the rough uh, texture and then and once you sand it down it's just it's just as smooth as the rest of the surface. But anyway that's that. I finished it with uh, uh, sand and sealer which I used DEF this time. Uh, I don't always use the lacquer sand and sealer. Uh, I've got Zenser over here and it's really good sand and sealer also doesn't matter what you use but uh, put it on until it's until uh, it's not soaking in anymore sand it up to uh, I think it was three yeah 320 sand it up to 320 and use the axe abrasive paste and then the axe polish and uh, turned out I think it turned out pretty great uh, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, bottom looks nice. Use a longwear chuck I built a couple years back. Uh, I actually built that on on YouTube. Uh, or it may have been. I think I actually built the big one. I've got two sizes, but I built them actually at the same time. And uh, I think the big one is actually the one that was on YouTube. But. Uh, Tom and Ann Ackley contacted me after my last video <clears throat> and uh, they're offering my viewers a uh, 10% discount on the Ackley uh, abrasive paste and polish kits that they sell. It's, it's, uh, uh, I think it's good stuff myself and you know if you want to try it they're, they're willing to give all my viewers 10% off. So if you want it and you go to their website and order, when you get to checkout, you type in uh, Ogle 10, uh, you know, and you'll get a 10% discount. So uh, anyway, I think that's pretty nice of them, and you know, you can get a good deal on on their paste kits. So anyway, uh, that's what we did. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you know. Just repairing a, an old bowl that's come back. That sometimes when you sell these things or give them away or something, you might get them back. 
uh, I did, I'm doing this free of charge, you know. Um, even though it wasn't my fault that they put it in the dishwasher, but then again, you know, that I think that's just, you know, good customer service. Uh, it didn't take that long to fix this thing, and, you know, and I've got a customer, she's bought bowls from me before, and I'm sure she'll buy more, you know, in the future. But, uh, yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed it. Uh, have a good day, and see you down the road.